Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for joining us today. We're gonna have some fun because what we've done is put together a hybrid studio. A hybrid studio includes a DAW as well as analog gear. And to help us figure this whole thing out, we've got Chris Fenton here. Great to see you, man. Yeah, it's good to be here. Sales engineer, and you've been doing this hybrid thing for a while. Yeah, I, uh, I've got a home studio. I use like an Army baby face and like A to D stuff. Um, got some compressors. It, it's just more fun to play with, you know, analog gear and sort of just kind of pressing buttons on the computer all the time. Right, so you're getting hands on yeah. with the actual signal flow, if you will. Absolutely. It's pretty easy to do. Now, normally we'd think, well, if we're going to use outboard gear, we need to get the highest of the high end, which is great. Yeah. If you can do that. But you don't have to because there's a lot of gear that's much more affordable that can still give you great results. Yeah, there's a lot of different options out there. And the cool part is, you know, with these uh, more affordable options is you still get the tactile control, you still get the fun part of being able to just influence your sound again without having to press buttons. The cool part is too, there's a lot of just cool gear out there. Like for example, Daft Punk had this Alesis 3630 on their album Discovery. Super unique sound because again, it's a little more affordable uh, piece of gear. Mm -hmm. Just a more fun. Yeah, an older analog compressor was not very expensive when it came out. Right. And uh, you know, you can find them used, but whether you're using new gear, or whatever you're doing, the sounds that you can get from analog gear integrated with your DAW can be really eye-opening, the different things you can do with that. But I think the question that always comes up, well, I don't think the question, I know the question that always comes up is, why don't I just do this with plugins? Why do I need external hardware? Yeah, I mean, you can definitely do that. I mean, again, you get you know, recallability, you're able to you know, recall settings. It's all well and good. I use tons of plugins. However, you know, with analog gear, just interaction between, you know, the electronics, the components, audio going in and out, it just sounds different. You know, there's right. just a, a, a feeling, a vibe. A vibe. There's a vibe, right. <laughs> right, and part of that is that a lot of analog gear has transformers in it, there may be tubes in it, different components influence the tonality that uh, comes out of the gear differently. That all leads to a unique sound. And there's also, as you mentioned, just the fun factor of actually reaching out and grabbing a knob, flipping a switch, pushing a button that makes the experience more visceral, if you will. Yeah, and I think one thing too, just you know, speaking as someone that does a lot of like mastering work, right, is you know, when you get hardware, you, you start developing your own sound. You know, you got you know guitar pedals, like this is my my sound, I like this reverb, this compressor, this, this, and this. Same with mastering, you know, you get your own tonal palette you can play with and say, this is how I master, this is how I mix, this is what I sound like. So there's all these advantages to using analog gear with your DAW. Let's talk a little about the actual gear we're using here today and how we have this hooked up. So we're starting with a Focusrite interface. Yeah, and Focusrite stuff is awesome. I mean, it's it's super versatile. I love the you know, Focusrite control, being able to mm. send audio wherever. So we have everything kind of going out, the, the outputs. I match the inputs and outputs to keep it straight because I've been in studios where I don't know where audio is going. I'm sure you have where it's like, right what's going on. The more organized, the better. Yeah. So I've got outputs three and four from the interface going into uh, the PreSonus channel strip and the uh, Clark Technic EQ for like the you know, bass, that sort of stuff. Um, then I also have the master going into the, the ART compressor. I just like compressors on masters. You know, it just mm -hmm. adds a little bit of glue, a little right. bit of oomph. And that's on output five and six? Correct, And yes. coming back in on input five and six. Yeah. So basically you select those outputs and inputs in your DAW, the signal routes out through those inputs, outputs rather, feeds into the input, the piece of gear comes back into the interface on the corresponding input, Yep. and then goes back into your DAW session as well. Basically, you're creating a loop. Correct, yeah, yeah. Again, just like, you know, it's really easy to think about it like a guitar uh, you know, guitar effects loop, right? You know, you go start at one point, input to output, input to output, input to output, into the amp, and you're, you're golden. Just the amp this time is an, inter in, an interface. Right. To learn more details about how to hook analog gear up with your DAW, I've created videos on this already. You can check out my videos on Pro Tools, Studio One, and Ableton Live, as well as an earlier video we did on hybrid studios. But let's continue on with what Chris has going on here with his rig. Yeah, so like I said, we've got the master of, I, there's an old Sweetwater jingle I found. I was like, let's let's play with it. Let's make it a little more exciting, right. you know? Uh, so again, yeah, let's uh, kind of dive in and just uh, send audio through this stuff. Okay. Where do you want to start? Let's just do, start with like the, the compressor here. Because again, it's like, you know, just, you know, it's exciting. You so know? again, you're sending the, the stereo mix yep. out five and six into the compressor, coming back into inputs five and six, and then that feeds through and goes out to the monitors. Correct. And the nice part is too, when you're doing it like this, you can always, you know, record it and then just kind of mix it all together, just like you normally would in a, in a studio session. Sure.
So the fun thing there is that it's very easy to work with the settings. Yeah. We're not mousing around. You can just reach down, grab whatever control you want. You can compare the bypass very easily and work with things. You can hear what's happening as you're actually changing the controls. And that gives you that instant feedback to what you're doing to your mix. Yeah, and then, I mean, man, the, the bypass button. Man, I, again, you've got a ton of studio experience. You know the power of being able to say, yes, it is on, it's off. Am I messing with it too much? It's just, just nice to have everything right there, ready to go. Right, right. Now we had that on the entire mix, but that could be on a stereo bus yep. for drums. It could be on stereo guitars or whatever. We're doing, you could use this dual mono on two separate tracks if you wanted to. So lots of versatility as well when you're incorporating hardware. Absolutely. So I'm sending the bass into this uh, you know, pre-Sonus channel strip. And the nice part about channel strips is a combination of a few pieces of gear, right? It's got an EQ typically, some even have like DSers, you know, a compressor, a lot of stuff all in one. So with right. stuff like you know, bass, vocals, like for broadcast work even, it's nice to have that all in just ready to go in one spot. Right, and in this case, we can actually bypass the compressor section here and the EQ section here separately with separate bypass switches, and we can even change the order, so there's yeah. a lot of versatility with it, a uh, channel strip as well. So let's hear the bass going through this. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, cool. So yeah, so I also have the bass going into the EQ as well. Um, so just kind of run that through there as well. With a Pultec style EQ like that, you can really hear the cut and the boost and oh, yeah. high and the low kind of interacting and working together. It's such a powerful equalizer. Sort of bases. I mean, there's so much like weird, just gunk you have to clean up. <laughs> so yeah, that's the best way with bass. It's just like yeah. just gunk, mid <laughs> mid gunk. <laughs> Well, the Clark Technic definitely takes the gunk Absolutely. out of it. So. Yeah, man. Very cool. So you can see how easy it is. Once you have things routed, which is just connecting the cables, making sure you know what output is going where, what input is going where, then you can select things right in your DAW, route your signals, and take advantage of all the benefits that analog hardware can add to your studio. The key is to have an audio interface that gives you enough inputs and outputs to connect all your gear. Once you have that, very easy to set up, very easy to make happen. Absolutely. Chris, thanks so much for taking the time to, to share this uh, hybrid setup with us. The, the tracks you found sound great, man. That's, that's <laughs> fun you. to hear those. That's from back in like the mid-90s or something like that. that yeah. They, uh, yeah, someone sent it to me and I was like, man, this, this is, this is kind, of, kind of a jam. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun to hear it and it's fun to hear it through analog hardware. So thanks very much. Absolutely. Appreciate you coming in. And thank you for joining us today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Sweetwater's